Happy New Year and welcome to the Wellard Gas Quiz. This is probably going to be the last quiz for a while, but don't forget, put your scores down in the comments below. So let's get on with it. So let's have a look at question number one. EN15287 utilise letters and numbers for the classification of flu systems. What three letters are used? So, did you say letter A is used for flueless appliances, letter B is used for open fluid appliances, and the letter C is used for room sealed appliances. So let's have a look at question number two. What minimum distance should a natural draft balance flue appliance be from an opening under a carport? Well hopefully you said 1200 millimeters. So let's have a look at question number three. When can a twin pipe flue system terminate the outlet and the inlet on different sides of a building? Well, can it? Well, yes it can, if the manufacturer says he can. So, let's have a look at question number four. On an open flued radiant fire, how far must the flue spigot protrude into the flue. Any ideas? Well hopefully you said 50 millimeters. Let's have a look at question number five. The combustion air on a vertex flue system is taken from... Well hopefully you know what a vertex flue system is. This is a picture of it. And the air from combustion is taken from the roof space. So how are you doing so far on the first five? Let me know, don't forget in the comments below. So let's get on with question number six. Now are you ready for the next five questions? These are mainly on the properties of natural gas. So let's have a look at question number six. What is the lower to higher flammability limits for natural gas in percentage? So hopefully you said 5 to 15% gas in air. So let's have a look at question number 7. What is the gross carolific value of natural gas? Well if you gas rate the way I show then you'll know this. But if you gas rate with an app and cheat, then you probably won't. It's actually 38.76 megajoules per meters cubed. So have a look at question number eight. What is the flame speed in meters per second of natural gas? So how many of you got this right? It's not 0.36 meters per second. So that's how fast it travels. Can you outrun it? Well, maybe if you're uh, Linford Christie. <laughs> or whoever is the fastest person in the world nowadays, because I don't know. Anyway, let's have a look at question number nine. How many megajoules are there in one kilowatt? Now again, if you gas rate the way I show you, you'll know this because it's part of the formula. And it is 3.6. Let's have a look at the final one in this section, question number 10. How many family gases are there and what are they? Well, did you say there are three family gases? <laughs> Had to think about spelling that then. And what are they? Well, family gas number one is town's gas or man-made gas. Number two is natural gas. And family gas number three is liquefied petroleum gas or LPG. So that's this 10. How did you do? Don't forget to put it in 
the comments below how you're doing so far and let's have a look at question number 11. Well we're up to question 11 on the Wellard gas quiz. How are you doing? Don't forget to put your scores down in the comments section below. So let's get on with it with number 11. What is the minimum clearance between an open flue chimney and combustible materials? Well hopefully on this one you said 25 millimetres. Let's have a look at question number 12 then. What is the maximum length of an open flue gas fire chimney can run external before lining is required? So how many metres do you think it was? Well if you said 10 metres you would be correct. Let's have a look at, unlucky for some, question 13. An online chimney needs a maximum void volume of the catchment space of... Well, this is in decimeters cubed or litres, so did you say... 12? Well, if you did, you'd be correct. Let's have a look at number 14. How many starter blocks does a precast flute system require? So in a precast flue system we have starter blocks, we have cover blocks, we have flue blocks and we have transfer blocks. So how many starter blocks do we need? Well we need three starter blocks. In this section let's look at the last one, number 15. To BS 5440 part 1, what is the size of a smoke pellet is required? to do a flu flow test. So how much smoke does it need to produce? Well it needs to produce five meters cubed of smoke over 30 seconds. So if you said that you would be correct. So don't forget let me know what your scores are so far and let's have a look at the final batch of five starting with number 16. Now let's look at these final set of questions on the dead hard gas quiz starting with question 16. Now these are all unsafe situations and I'm also going to tell you where you can find these in iGEM G11 because when I do questions like this a lot of you don't actually agree with me. So let's get on with question 16. A tightness test passes but there is a smell of gas. So hopefully you said it is ID and if you want to find it in iGEM G11 it's in 1.2. So let's have a look at question 17. In a non-emergency situation where there is restricted access to the ECV. Now how many of you said ID? Well you'd be wrong, it's actually at risk and if you want to know where it is it's at 3.5 of the iGEM G11 unsafe situations procedure. Let's have a look at question 18. A vent for an open fluid gas fire has a gauze or a fly screen. So hopefully you said it's at risk and if you want to know where it is it's at 4.3 of the iGEM G11. Question 19. Incorrect use of a plume management kit taking products of combustion outside and air in inside a building. Well hopefully you didn't say it was ID this would be at risk and it's at 6.4 in iGEM G11 if you want to have a look. Shall we have a look at the final question in this dead hard gas quiz? An appliance connected to a sealed heating system with no pressure relief valve. So this is a boiler connected to a sealed system with no pressure relief valve. Did you class it as ID? Well you'd be wrong because again it's at risk. And if you want to know where it is, it is at 7.13 in iGEM G11. So that's the end of my Wellard gas quiz. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. 
Don't forget to put your scores down in the comments below and I'll catch you on the next ones. Cheers.